Animating the arms in IK can be a real pain sometimes. Having to always make the arms follow each pose, sometimes frame by frame, is really tedious and it can be quite annoying. But actually we can use some really really cute tricks to get some really good free animation. So in this video I'm going to show you how I would work with IK arms and this also applies to any other IK limb or IK chest or any other world space controllers. So on the screen now is a very quick jump assignment I set myself to do in under 10 minutes. I want to show you how you can get some really quick free animation by using some tricks. So you can see here that when I move the chest and the root that actually the arms are following the body. So this is set to the local parent space of the chest. So basically I can set myself a nice pose on the arms which I want to keep through this section of the movement. And this can be changed on certain key poses, it doesn't have to stay the same. But roughly just pose up the arms how I want them to be through this action. And then I make a very short 25 frame jump, I'm going to animate this jump. So this is one of the airborne poses now, about frame 16, and you can see that the arms are still following the body. There's no animation on the arms at all, it's just literally following the single pose I made at the start, and it's the same animation all the way through. So this is the jump I made, it's pretty simple, it's a very quick sort of 5 minute assignment. So now what we can, what we can do is we can take this local space information and bake it onto a controller and switch it to the world space parent. So I'm going to use a script for this which I'll link down below. Basically this takes the locator, bakes the location and then puts it onto this locator. Now make sure you add some keys to the IK handle, maybe every three frames. Enough keys that basically Maya can correctly guess where the location should be. If there's too few frames, it won't look very good. Basically baking it on twos or threes. So now this locator in the, out, in the um, outliner is controlling the eye gate hand in world space. So now if I move the translation Y, you can see that it only affects just that translation, which means I can now really, really simply go and change these curves. I can offset them by one or two frames. And now the animation is completely sort of naturally offset. This is just a starting point though of course, so I can go and add my own animation, add some rotations of course, and make things a bit more natural. However, this doesn't just apply to the hands. I can also select other controllers in world space, or any controller really, and make a world space controller using the same method. So in this example I'm going to use the chest. I'm now put the locator onto the chest and bait down this animation. You know, offsetting curves, means in world space I can clearly see what's happening and makes a really nice overlap. This is just literally free animation which I can then go in and clean up myself using the world space graph editor curves. It's so simple and it's so free basically. I can also do this move to the hips though it looks a bit strange. Yep, so just do control Z and put it back. The good thing about this workflow is as long as you don't delete the locators, you haven't really lost any of the workflow. This is a pretty non-destructive workflow basically. But then you can bake it back onto the locators, so onto the controllers, and now you get full control back again onto the actual rig. And this may still be in world space or depending if you switch the space in the actual controller itself, you can then put it back into world space, local space, that's really down to the rig and to your preference. But this gives you the free animation that you baked and then you can animate this without having to go frame by frame and make these nice poses. So now this quick animation, which isn't polished, but this animation literally took me five minutes. I'm sure using IKEA hands for some of the simple may have been quite easy in world space, but apply this method to 100 frames or 150 frames this method is really quick to get a really good first good blocking pass of the entire shot. And after about two or three minutes more of animating, this was the final sort of jump cycle. I think in total this took me about eight and a half minutes. All I really had to do was offset some curves, 
make sure the rotations were correct and the fingers were overlapping correctly as well. It's really simple, really quick, and I really recommend using this in some of your workflows. So a big thank you for watching and do please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. I'm really trying to upgrade my video quality and make some really good educational animation videos. So liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing is really, really helpful. If there's anything you guys want to see me make, then please do leave a comment down below. I have a bunch more videos planned, but I'm always open to suggestions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye and happy animating.